I'm Jane Clark, I'm a dietitian and I've looked after people living with cancer for over 25 years. But I'm also a real food lover, which is why I'm here today to talk about how food and the food that you put inside your body can really help you whilst you're living with cancer. When you're about to start chemotherapy or, or any sort of cancer treatment, you can read all sorts of scare stories on the internet about what you should and what you shouldn't eat. And there's no right and there's no wrong. Generally when we're starting on our treatment schedule, we try and say it's ideal to try and put a bit of a balanced diet structure around you. So that can mean that you're looking at all your different food groups and you need the proteins, you need the fibres, you need the fruits and the vegetables. And I think one of the most valuable things that you can do is actually start to keep a diary of what you're eating and what you're drinking and how your body's feeling. So stimulating someone's appetite is a really important part of caring for someone who's undergoing treatment. And one of the biggest mistakes that we make is actually thinking they've got to eat lots because they need to build up their strength and we serve a big plate full of food and yet as you found with your father a big plate of food can be very overfacing and they just go oh, I can't do it but what you do is you serve a really small portion of something so a small casserole or a small um, plate of cheese and biscuits or pate and bread what you're wanting is a small amount, but you want it to be calorie rich because you don't just want a plate of fruit or vegetables that doesn't have any calories there. So it could be that you're serving the, the bread and the cheese with a little bit of olive oil that you can dip the bread into, or when you're making a little soup, don't just leave it just as soup, actually add a little bit of cream or a bit of creme fraiche or a bit of grated cheese on top. So small but calorie intense is the way to go when someone's just got a bit of a small appetite. The other thing to do is just to serve a small appetising selection of a few things that he really used to love eating whilst he's watching television or reading a book so that it's easier just to pick them up as little nibbles and that can just be a good way of getting over that barrier. Our stomach is generally tiny and if you just have too many whole grains, fruits and vegetables, they sit in your stomach and they swell with the water around and they just fill you up, but they don't have a lot of calories. So we often need to tip this whole notion of what healthy eating is on its head for a bit. And we say, actually, we want calories. We want nourishing, high, intense, calorie-rich dishes. So generally, they're things that you can look for a source of fat within them. So it can be adding some olive oil or some butter within something. It can be where you're just wanting to have little calorie-intense sweet treats during the day. It can be that you have small nourishing meals that have a lot of calorie power packed within them. So instead of having, say, vegetables that you're really craving on their own, drizzle them with olive oil or do a lovely bechamel sauce and make it like a little cauliflower cheese. Or if you're wanting something that's like a bread, you know, do sort of the old fashioned plenty of butter or olive oil within it. So you're always thinking, where are my calories coming from? And they're generally the fat intense dishes and they're the sweet intense dishes. And it's not the bulky, high fibrous foods. So this might be the time for you to instead choose a white bread, because that doesn't fill you up as much as a whole grain. Or it could be that you're wanting to have that fish, but then just have it lightly fried in some butter or olive oil instead of having it steamed. So all those classic healthy eating, calorie lowering principles, we need to go the opposite way. We've got great recipes online and join our community and just keep in touch and we'll come up with lots of ideas of things that you can do just to try and improve your weight and just keep you strong. I can't get going in the morning without a coffee but I'm often asked about whether it's okay to have coffee when you're undergoing cancer treatment and in fact coffee there's nothing wrong with it. The only thing you might just watch is that when you're undergoing the cancer treatment sometimes your gut becomes very sensitive and some people find that coffee or tea, particularly if it's quite strong, just makes it feel more acidic and more upset. So it might just be a question of the timing of your coffee and just having maybe a couple a day. There are huge different varieties of tea, from the black teas right the way through to the green tea, white tea. Now, often green tea and white tea contain a lot of antioxidants and you might just be told when you're undergoing your cancer treatment that you need to avoid those supplements 
or things in your diet that are particularly antioxidant rich. Now that generally doesn't mean vegetables or fruits, which of course contain the amazing antioxidants, but it could mean that you need to watch the amount of white tea or green tea that you're just having. So just check in with your care team. When you're feeling particularly sick, something like a traditional ginger can be really soothing for the gut or a fresh mint. But with mint, just be careful about the strength of the mint tea. Because I often find with some of my patients that a weak mint tea can be soothing for a gut, but if it's particularly strong and you've left the tea bag sitting there for a long time, it then can just aggravate acidity. If you're feeling a bit wired from the steroids, which can often make you struggle to sleep, something like a traditional chamomile, can be very soothing for the gut or a lemon verbena. So this is just a start. Look out for more videos where I answer your questions, post them online or post them within the box below and keep in touch and just let's get talking about food and living with cancer.